Okay, I took my uh, keeper grains out of the refrigerator. They've been uh, in there for a little, oh, several days. Uh, now I'm ready to use them again. And uh, I took them out uh, last night or yesterday afternoon. And uh, so they've been sitting out on the counter uh, for all day yesterday and uh, till it's early afternoon right now. So. Anyways, it, it's gotten pretty thick, and I, this batch here I'm wanting to try to make uh, keeper cheese out of. So I gotta get my grains out of here. So I'm gonna pour them through a sieve here. You can see how thick that is. So I just gotta kinda. Usually, if you just do this, you just have the. The liquid is pretty easy. You can separate the grains pretty easy, and uh, which I probably should have done and just second secondary ferment. You know, take the grains out and leave it on the counter for a little longer uh, without the grains in it. It would still thicken up ferment. I'm trying to get it to like over. They call it over ferment. Separate a little bit. So that's pretty good because I'm going to start another batch here. Here, I'm gonna try to get a quart going here. So I had a little spillage. So going again. Make sure you didn't get any grains in there. We probably did. Okay, so I'm gonna strain this. In here, I had a little spillage, so I cleaned that up, kind of basically starting over. Uh, I do have some keeper grains in here, and I'll show you those here in a second. But I, I just kind of want to get this kind of strained. Make sure I got all the keeper grains out of there. Usually this is... Uh, pretty thick so it's a lot thinner and it's a lot easier to separate than it is today which is good that's what I want I want to make a nice thick keeper so I can separate the curd and it'll be good so I don't think I have any more grains in this stuff so I think we're gonna call that good so we'll put that there and then throw my milk back in this container here. So that one's pretty good. I think we're going to take this guy, put him in the put him in the fridge until. And I want to, I don't want to screw this on tight because it'll it will carbonate and make a mess when you open it. it that's from experience. So just leave it kind of loose on there. Now these are the, some of the keeper grains. I think you can kind of see it's easier to see them when they're rinsed, but they kind of look like uh, cottage cheese. Can we go ahead and zoom a little bit? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, they do. And uh, so that's the keeper grains themselves. And so what I'm going to do is. Uh, I'll just fill this up with milk, maybe three quarters of the way. And that's whole milk, right? Yeah, it's whole milk, and it's uh, pasteurized. And I think I'm going to just go with that amount. Give it a nice stir. And, you know, metal spoons, I think it's okay if it's uh, stainless steel, you're, you're probably okay. I've never had a problem with it. I'll put this on here. And we're gonna put that. I'll put that over here on the counter. Let this ferment. Okay, so I, I moved the keeper over here, and we'll let it set here uh, overnight. Tomorrow we'll check on it, see if it's uh, thickening up pretty good, uh, and then I'll separate it tomorrow and let that secondary ferment. I'll put this in the fridge. We'll keep it to add to this, and I'll probably do another batch so I have enough to make a block of uh, cheese, and it's going to turn out a lot like feta. So it's kind of a hard 
a real tangy cheese and it's really good on salads and stuff like that. We really like it. So really healthy for you too, a lot of probiotics. So we'll be back. See ya. Okay, we're gonna uh, get back to this keeper now. This keeper has been sitting now uh, for over 24, a little over 24 hours. So it's about ready for me to deal with. So I'm gonna have to separate the grains from it. And then I'm gonna take and uh, secondary ferment this again because my goal here is to make a hard cheese uh, out of it you know kind of like uh, like feta so anyways that's what we're gonna try to do so this was the one that we took out last time we took the grains out of here secondary ferment this we had put the grains in here so this got put into the fridge and you can see how it's separated and uh, that's what we're looking for for it's, it's called over ferment i guess uh, but if you're going to ferment this just to drink it and stuff it, it's pretty tangy it's a little sour uh when it's like this and it's a little thick so that's what we're looking for is thick so that we can strain it and uh make a cheese out of it so my goal is to do that with this guy so i'm gonna get this guy here se separate my grains from it Got a strainer here. So I'm just gonna pour that in here. Make sure I don't have any more keeper grains in here. Which I don't think I do. So we're gonna just get in here and work this through the strainer. It's a little it gets pretty thick right around the grains, so you got to kind of work it in there. You're not going to hurt them. Kind of work it down in there to get the most of that stuff off the grains here, because that's going to help us in the secondary ferment. So I'll take these guys here. That's my keeper grains. And I'll put them in a jar here. We'll do the secondary ferment in the jar that we took this out of. That will help aid in the uh, fermentation there with some of the residue left over in there. So we'll just keep it that way. And we'll set that aside. I'll set this in the sink. Here we'll kind of get some of the goodness off the bottom here. Off there. We'll set that, set this in the sink. Yeah, just throw it over here for just in case. And we'll take and pour this guy back in there. And we're just going to let this set on the counter too to uh, secondary ferment. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. And so we'll take and put a, a new lid on this one here, this secondary fermenting. And then I'll take uh, the old lid here. I'll kind of clean it off a little bit here. Pick the towel. Bring that seal off a little bit. And then uh, some milk in here. And this, once again, this is whole milk. I'm doing a whole uh, whole milk, full fat uh, kefir. It's just a better product. And I'll give this a little stir in here to get the grains kind of mixed up a little bit. That'll help. Get them going. We'll put this on here. And this this is a, a lid it's, with some painter's tape. Works good. That way I'm not having to write on my lids uh, the painter's tape. Is easy to come off, and uh, this is worth the one that has the kefir grains in it, so I don't get get it confused. And then uh, when I put it in the fridge, I'll put another piece in here and put a date on it when I put my kefir grains to sleep. And so we'll cover that when I do it. And 
And so when you put these out, you want you don't want the lid real tight. Just put it on there loose so that because this when it ferments it creates gas and and uh, it'll actually it'll actually carbonate this. And when you open it up, it'll kind of fit us and stuff. So it builds up a little pressure if you don't release that cap on there. So I'll take this stuff over here and we'll secondary ferment and we'll be good. And this is going to go back to the fridge along with the milk and we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, it's the next day on the keeper. So this is the one with the grains in it, uh, one with the blue label. This one here is our secondary ferment. So this is probably going to just go right into the fridge here, but I did want to see you, if you want to get over here, Cindy, get a little close up here. Got it. How, how thick this is. Oh, yeah. It's just really thickened up, so that's going to work good uh, for us to try to put in the cheesecloth. Anyways, we're going to put that in the fridge, set that aside. This was our first ferment on this stuff. My keeper grains are really super active. Seems like, so, you know, they're really thick. I'll get it stirred up a little bit here. And it's the same old thing. We're gonna, I'll try to do it without making a mess this time. We're gonna strain these keeper grains. And everything I can out of there. So this quart here is gonna make uh, two, and we got a pint in the fridge too, so I think that's gonna give us enough to, to make our, our cheese. So I'm gonna get this going through this sieve. Kind of looks like cottage cheese. afraid to press on them. Yeah, you can see the color coming out here now. You can see the... You can see how they look there. They're looking... Little... So I got quite a few grains going here. Started off with a teaspoon when I had uh, bought some. And uh, they grow pretty quick. So you can grow your own and then give some away to your, your friends and stuff. And, we had some friends down, and I should have gave her some. She bought some on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, Christy got some, so sorry, Christy, I should have gave you some. I didn't think about it. Okay, so here we go. Put those in this jar here, and we're going to put these to sleep just by adding, filling this jar up with some, uh, some milk, some whole milk. Put a lid on it. We'll put it in the freezer. Uh, use our caper, keeper. Are you sure here. you don't want to put it in the refrigerator? What did I say? Freezer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, think we want to put it in the refrigerator. refrigerator. Okay. And then we'll put a date on this uh, so that I, I know about it. So, and then this, this is going to go <coughs> get all this goodness off the bottom here in there. Everything counts. Now we're gonna put this in a jar. We'll put this in the fridge until we're ready to make the cheese. Let it get cooled cool down. And uh, it'll, it'll keep fermenting for a little bit. You can pick it up even more. So tomorrow, we'll stick this in a little cheese press. So we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, we're back here. This is, uh, I've run my kefir that was been over fermented uh, through this little, it's a yogurt strainer for making Greek yogurt, but I'm using it for this. My kefir seems to work pretty good. So my kefir was pretty thin. Well, it wasn't real thin. I mean, it over ferments, it gets pretty thick, but I run it through there and, and I end up with, with that right there. And this is actually kefir cheese. It's good like this. It's a, it could be like a replacement for sour cream, but it's packed full of probiotics. So I'm gonna take this out of my strainer here. 
and I am going to come back here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all in this uh, cheese press. This, this is a little homemade uh, cheese press that uh, some friends of mine, they found it at a garage sale or a thrift store. I don't remember which, but it's a homemade job. It's pretty, it works great. Two pieces of 3 8 inch all thread, nuts on the bottom, the top. They put some plastic feet on the, or some rubber feet on the bottom, keep it up off the counter. And uh, so you tighten these nuts down so this doesn't turn. And then you got, uh, uh, oh, these are little knobs, 3 8 knobs, top and a couple springs. So the springs, this will all tighten down and push. I'm going to put this bowl inside here for a press on top of cheesecloth. So this will press down on there, you tighten it down and then the springs will keep tension on there and that'll just, what that does for you is you don't have to come back every two minutes and keep tightening these down a little bit. So tighten them down pretty good. And then as that cheese drops, that, that will lower down like that. So this actually works pretty good. So I'll be back uh, with the cheesecloth in there. And we'll dump some of that in there. We're dumping that in there. Well, I try to get as much as I can out of there because it's all good stuff. And then uh, I'll be back and we'll set it all up in the press. Okay, we're back here at the sink. Got this bowl washed out. Got some cheesecloth uh, put in the, uh, well, that's a little cheese strainer here. Cheese mold. So you can see it's already getting some uh, whey on there. And I just, I'm just gonna dump this off. I'm not gonna save that. I've saved the other stuff and I drank it really. It's really good. So what we'll do is we'll fold this up over the top. I don't want too much of this hanging out, this cheesecloth, because it will act like a wick and then just keep going over the top here. So we're gonna take this and put this under the mold here, or the press. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to raise these guys up a little bit. And I'm gonna move this over towards the sink. That way, when I get this all going, I, all I gotta do is come in here and tip this thing and it'll drain this plate into the sink, so as the whey comes off of it. So we'll do this. And then we we'll just start tightening this thing down. And we'll have to do this several times in the next several hours. And it's okay to leave your keeper out. It's Worst it could do is ferment a little bit more and make that cheese a little more sour. So, which is okay. We're going to try to make some feta-like cheese out of this, I think. You can stop this at any point if you want a softer cheese. You know, you get it to like a cream cheese consistency. You can stop it there. But I think we're going to go for a little bit more. And I've tightened it too much. You see that all oozing out here? I wasn't paying attention, so oh, I need to back that off a little bit. And unfortunately, uh, I don't have anything. Okay, I'll be back after I clean this mess up. Okay, so we tighten this down. You can see that the way is coming out of there already. So we'll make sure this is nice firm on here so I'm going to just take and tip this a little bit more here and we'll give it another little so 
We'll come back after a bit. We'll let that sit there and do its thing. And uh, should be draining off a bunch more stuff here away here. So works pretty slick. Keep it by the sink. Okay, it's been several hours. I've cranked these down uh, bit by bit over the last several hours. Dumped a lot of the whey off, got quite a bit. But you can see how low this bowl is. It used to be up like this high, so it's really smashed down. So we're gonna take this out of here and uh, let's see what we got here. Let's see if I can get the bowl out of there. See that that's all formed into that. There we go. So I'm gonna take this guy back in here. Sometimes you gotta get in here and stir it a little bit. I found anyways, because it kind of wants to seal itself. Look down in here, Cindy. Sure. Oh, nice. Right now, it's it's that consistency. It's it's pretty good. So I'm yeah, just gonna looks good. I'm gonna stir really it up good. a little bit. We're gonna want this to get a little bit harder. So we'll be having some of that on a salad tomorrow night. I hope so. Yeah, I think so. So uh, I'm just gonna stir this up a little bit, and then we'll put it back in the cheese press, and we'll see how that goes. So. We'll, uh, we'll be back here in the morning. I'm gonna put this on this cheese press so it's, you've seen that method before or process and uh, we'll be back. Okay, it's the next morning. It got a little late last night so I took this whole contraption here and I got a, a fridge out in the uh, garage here. So I just fit it in the fridge overnight. But it, I probably could have done this last night. It was done, so. But I'm gonna just do it now here So I'm just going to move over here. So there we go. This uh, this is what we ended up with, and it's a nice crumbly, crumbly uh, dry cheese. I'm gonna give her a taste here. Thanks a little bit.